Wait, if they're such fast runners, how come they're just laying around? Cheetahs don't run for fun. They run to hunt animals for food. So, if we want to see it run, guess we should find something cheetahs run after. Like gazelles. There's one. I think it's creeping up on its prey. But wait, I don't see any prey. It's watching and waiting for the right time to pounce. Ooh, look over there. Whoa. A gazelle. Wow, look at it go. The cheetah is fast. But so are the gazelles. I think I got the cheetah's whole run. Let's check out the footage in slow motion. The cheetah picks up speed so quickly. And it accelerates just like I did. Look at its leaping strides. Its claws help it grip the ground so that its feet don't slip around when it runs. It says here that the cheetah's claws stay out all the time. They never fully retract. It's the only cat that does that. Let's see what the speed tracker says about how fast it's going. It was running as fast as a car driving on a highway. Zoom! Now that is fast. Cheetahs are amazing runners. Plus, I like their faces. Those black marks under their eyes are cool. Those markings are called teardrops. They help keep the sun from glaring in their eyes so they can see where they're going. You know, I think I'm ready to try another run. I put black under my eyes to block out the sun's glare. I'm stretching so that I can take long strides. And my shoes have spikes like claws so that I won't slip. Ready? Time to run like a cheetah. Go! Cheetah Lily! your fastest time ever! Way to go, Lily! Thanks, Willow. Thanks a lot for helping me learn to run faster, Cheetah, old buddy. And now I'm gonna do something else that cheetahs do. What's that? Lay down. <sighs> okay, got it. That doesn't look right. <sighs> Nash! Give them a heads up. Right! <gasps> Is that Marco? <gasps> right! Ah, uh, Nash! Nash! Let's go this way! <sighs> Phew, that was close! Look, cats! There are a lot of them. Several meerkats can live in one burrow, but the whole group can be as many as 40! Lots of meerkats. Their burrows are connected by underground tunnels. Look! Babies! Right! They all work together to take care of their young and to get food for everyone. You mean 40 breakfasts, 40 lunches, and 40 dinners every day? Yeah! They hunt small rodents, lizards, insects, even poisonous scorpions. But they eat fruit too. Look! They're all standing with their backs to each other around the burrow. They guard their burrows to protect them from predators. Ooh. To keep their babies safe? I think so. And when something comes around, they give each other the heads up to let all the other meerkats know that something is coming. Secretly, let's do what the meerkats do. Heads up! Heads 
so surprised. It's Marco. They must be heading this way. Quick, hide it. Whatcha doing? Nash, since you like bonga bonging so much. We thought you could use... <gasps> Bongos! Bonga bonga bong! Bonga bonga bong! Another hypothesis. What's that? A hypothesis is what you think might be the answer to a question. In this case, why ostriches put their heads in the sand. They might do it because they're scared, but there might be another reason. Well, my hypothesis is that they do it to hide from predators, from animals that want to eat them. But that leaves their whole body sticking out unprotected. Yeah, and if its head is in the ground, it won't be able to see a predator coming. Well, that might make them pretty silly, but you never know. So let's go find out why ostriches bury their heads in the sand. Let's find out what those ostriches are doing. Come on! Shh, we don't want them to run away. Right, and I have just the thing to help us get really close to them. <gasps> They're not real. I made them. They're hollow inside, so they're easy to carry. We can hide behind them and get closer to the ostriches. Wow, everybody, wow. Really? Shh. Yeah. Shh. Quiet, everybody. There they are. Shh. Oh, hey. Oh, my gosh. Ah. Ah. Come on. Let's try to get closer. Wow, they're even bigger close up. You know, we haven't seen any ostriches stick their head in the sand yet. Wait, I think that one is. But there haven't been any loud noises, and there aren't any predators around here. Those were two of the things we thought. So maybe that's not it. But it could still be hot. Or itchy. Look, there goes another one. Holding its head in the sand. Is it? I can't see what it's doing. I think we should try to get closer. <gasps> Ginormous eggs! <gasps> the eggs! Wow! Ooh. Those are definitely the biggest eggs in the world. That must be its nest. Look, it's turning the eggs with its beak. That's why it keeps lowering its head. They're not sticking their heads in the sand at all. They're sticking their heads in their nests, which are a hole in the ground. We figured it out. Their necks are so long and their heads are so small that when they bend down, it just looks like they're sticking their head in the sand. And now we know because we investigated for ourselves. And now I know something about ostriches. We all do. Nash, watch uh. out. Whoa! Nash! Shh! Ostriches! <laughs> all zebras have black and white stripes, Nash. Of course, there's more than one species of zebra. Chester, maybe that's it! It turns out there are three different kinds of zebras. And each kind of zebra has different stripes. Take a look, Nash. Nope, long stripes. Well, there's this one. Nah, -uh. here's the third one, the plain zebra. That looks like one we've seen around here. What do you say? Yep. Yeah. 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 But wait, what is it, Lily? We still don't know how to pick out Natchez zebra from all the other zebras around here. Yes, but it also says that. Every individual zebra has a unique pattern of stripes. So you can tell them apart. But we don't know what that zebra looks like. Hmm. Heel. <gasps> Nash's selfie with the zebra. We'll totally be able to see its stripes now. Audrey, could you scan for zebra herds? Scanning. Scanning. I have detected a few herds of zebra directly ahead. All yes. right. Then let's go. Wow, so many zebras. And we have to find just the right set of stripes. I'm having an engineering moment. Behold, 
The Polo Zebra Matcher. It should be able to compare the stripe pattern of Nash's zebra to any other zebra. Yay! <laughs> Is it here? Hmm, it doesn't look like Nash's zebra is in this herd. Well, I guess we'll keep looking then. Let's go! It's not in this herd. Or this one. Nope, Nash's zebra isn't in this herd either. I wonder why zebras even have stripes. <gasps> when they move, their stripes make it hard to tell where one zebra starts and another one ends. So it would be hard for predators, too. That must be why they have stripes. For protection. My zebra! <laughs> scanning. Scanning. It's a match. That's Nash's zebra. I think Nash already knew that. Hello. Yeah. Scientists think their stripes also confuse bugs and keep them from being bitten. I wish I had stripes. There's an insect pushing a ball of poop. It looks like a kind of beetle. What would such a little thing want with such a big ball of poop? You don't think it's gonna eat it? Ew! Ew. Uh, let's look it up. It's a dung beetle. Dung? What's that? Dung is another word for poop. And yes, it's going to eat it. Yuck! Why? It says here that whenever an animal eats something, not all of it gets digested. Some tiny undigested bits end up in its dung. And that's what dung beetles eat? Yes. They also get water from the dung. OK, this time I'm going to say it. Eee, yuck! Where's it going? Yeah, if they're going to eat dung, why not eat it right here? Yeah, there's plenty. They bury it so they can eat it later? And they lay their eggs in the dung balls. It looks like it's working really hard. That ball is huge in comparison to the beetle. Dung beetles are the strongest insect. It can move a ball over a thousand times its weight. That's like you pulling a school bus, Nash. Wow. But that's not all. Dung beetles help the environment of the savanna by burying and eating tons of dung produced by other animals. You mean they help to keep this place clean? Yes. Plus, flies lay eggs in dung. So by eating and burying so much of it, the dung beetles stop the fly eggs from hatching. So, fewer flies. That's amazing. Actually, dung beetles are amazing. Dung beetle, dung beetle, dung beetle, dung beetle, dung beetle, dung beetle. They've got a dirty job that someone's gotta do. They're small but mighty and they're tidy too. We're lucky there's a bug that's willing to lug around so much poop. They go to work every single day with a tumbling dance that looks like play. But if you had to do a job with poo, would you? Protect themselves and their territory. Tango dientes, puntiagudos. Lily, you speak another language? What a surprise! Yep, that was Spanish. What did you say? I said, I have pointy teeth. <laughs> <laughs> I could say that in loud too. Keo coit liam. Wow, wow. that's great. <gasps> Hippos really move fast. Hippos can actually run faster than people. That's surprising. They're so big. Prize! Prize! Knock our socks off, buddy. Whoa! Nash 
Josh is an acrobat. I didn't know he could do that. Surprising. Oh, yeah? Well, how about this? Nice fun skating, Marco. Another surprising thing that one of us can do. <laughs> Thanks. <gasps> oh. Guys. <laughs> <laughs> I like how they can keep their whole body underwater, with just their nose and eyes sticking out so that they can breathe and see. That one was totally underwater. They must be able to hold their breath for a while. Hippos can stay underwater for up to five minutes at a time. And they can even sleep underwater and automatically come up to breathe without waking up. Wow! Oh, amazing! Hey, look! Oh. Whoa! That hippo was really swimming fast! Wait a minute. Is it really swimming? Whoa! Wait till you see this. <gasps> it's running! Underwater! It's called an underwater gallop. Like a horse's gallop? Exactly. Now that's a surprise. Surprise! Yes. In fact, the word hippopotamus means river horse. That oh, is cool. that. Hippos are really surprising animals, aren't they? Well, what about you, Chester? What's the most surprising thing that you can do? Well, 